We all enjoy being outside in a garden with trees and beautiful flowers. When you want to take a break from your homework or just to play, you would go out into your garden. It can be very relaxing, especially when we are upset or have something bothering us. To have the beautiful swaying of the trees and to see pretty flowers, maybe we have a vegetable patch where we can go exploring and taste the wonderful crop. Gardens bring joy to everyone. They are a gift from God. Who can tell me when God created man, what was the name of that place? That's right, paradise, a great boundless garden. Did you know that Panagia, the mother of God, has a garden? It is a place which she visits often. It is a place that her son Jesus Christ gave her because he loves her very much. Would you like to know where that garden is and its name? Panagia's garden is called Mount Athos, the holy mountain. It is found in Greece and it is one of the world's most beautiful places. This is why Panagia asked her son, Jesus Christ, to grant Mount Athos to her since Christ loves his mother very much. Whatever she asks for, Jesus will always give it to her. Panagia gave the instruction that whoever wanted to go and live there, they would do so for only one reason, to save their soul and to remain close to Jesus forever. Because of this reason, for over 1,000 years, Mount Athos has been home to men who have left behind family, friends, homes and their work to live in Panagia's garden. Their lives on Mount Athos is different to yours and mine. Monks don't have families like we do. They don't get married, nor do they get a job to earn money. They live in large buildings called monasteries. They share work like loving brothers. The monks are very hardworking, tending to the various needs of the monastery. When the work of the day is finished, they all go to church together to pray. The monks go to church every day, like we go to church on Sundays. Dressed in their black robes, with their long beards, they live like the angels. Wherever they go, whatever they do, they always think of and chant with happiness the name of Jesus. They try to apply what Panagia asked of anyone who wanted to live there. That is, to come closer to Christ. Whatever they do, it is for Christ. Their life is full of prayer, study and effort to become better Christians. That's how the monks put into practice Panagia's request. In turn, Panagia loves and visits her garden, Mount Athos, regularly, performing many miracles. The monks love her and respect her dearly. Today, we are going to talk about the miracle associated with a very special icon found at the monastery of Iviron on Mount Athos called Panagia Portaetisa. It is the year 820 AD. In the Queen city of Constantinople, Emperor Theophilus ordered the icons to be taken from the churches and destroyed by fire. He sent spies to find them and destroy them. In Nicaea, which is in modern-day Turkey today, there lived a pious, wealthy and virtuous widow. She had one child, a son. 
they owned a wonder-working icon of the Banayia. She loved Banayia very much. She went there every day to pray to Banayia. One day, the spies went into her house and saw the icon. They threatened her. We want money. If you refuse, we will punish you and kill you. That night, they went to the icon of Banayia for the last time. They took the icon down to the sea. The woman stood on a rock and threw it into the sea. But instead of sinking, it stayed upright and floated in a westward direction. They were amazed. The mother spoke to her child and said, Leave, so you may be saved. Banayia will guide you. The son left. He travelled over mountains, rivers, towns and cities. He reached Mount Athos and became a monk at the monastery of Iviron. He told the monks about the icon and they recorded the date. It is now 1004 AD, almost 200 years later. One night, two days after Easter, the monks at the monastery of Iviron saw a column of fire coming from the sky to the icon. They tried to get the icon, but it moved away every time. The monks went to a nearby mountain where a well-known monk lived, Elder Gabriel. He was well-known because of his humility and holiness. The monks told him about the icon and pleaded with him to help them to get the icon. Elder Gabriel prayed long into the night and Panagia appeared to him and told him, that she wanted him to get the icon. So the next day, praying, chanting and sensing, Elder Gabriel walked on the water and got the icon. When he put the icon on the shore, immediately a spring of pure water started flowing. The monks put the icon in the church, but the next day it was gone. They looked everywhere and found it near the monastery's gate. They took it back to the church, but the next day it went to the same place again. Then Panagia appeared again to the monk Gabriel and told him to keep her icon there because she did not want the monks to protect her, but she wanted to protect them. That is why the icon has the name Panagia Portaitisa, the mother of God at the door of the monastery. Did you know that even here in Australia, there are three monasteries dedicated to Panagia, the mother of God? There is St. George Monastery at Yellow Rock, New South Wales, with the beautiful Panagia Kitrino Petritisa. There is Panagia Gorgoe Picos Monastery in Geelong, Victoria. There is Panagia Pandanasa Monastery at Mangrove Mountain in New South Wales. We must think of ways to bring Panagia into our lives and maybe even to get her to visit us. In order to do this, we can read books about Panagia, pray to Panagia, chant the paraclesis to Panagia. We can try and imitate Panagia by being humble and obedient to her Son, Jesus Christ. If we do all these things, then Panagia will consider our hearts and our homes like a beautiful garden. Then Panagia will not hesitate to visit us with all her glory, just like she visits the monks at Mount Athos. Our love